Hello, ladies and gentlemen. And we seem to have more racism. Oh, I know. You guys maybe think, oh, is it about black people again? Uh, well, um, well, no, guys. It's, um, it's about white people. Um, yeah, I'm sorry that, um, you white people are apparently not of importance. You don't mean anything, and you are all racist bigots that deserve to, um, be eradicated from the planet because you're all racist. And, um, that's my truth. Um, um, unfortunately, if somebody can't realize, uh, what that was, that was sarcasm and bit of a joke there, because that is, seems to only be played by the far left, aka actual true racists, because they seem to deem that anything that white people do is just complete racism, even though they're the racists themselves. What I'm getting at here is that, uh, BLM activists, white people must skip Wakanda forever on opening weekend, otherwise you are anti-black. Now, now, now! I know what you're getting at. Well, JM reports, it says that November 1st, 2022, and we already know about this. True! But we're going to get to the main story, the spicy meatball that you guys are probably wanting to know. Um, so, we, we all know that, uh, that all, to all Caucasian people, don't you dare go watch the movie on opening weekend. Seats should be safe, reserved for only for people of color, more specifically, more specifically black people, and if you don't abide by those rules, then you are anti-black. Uh... Since the film is just too important for the black community that white audiences must absolutely refrain from attending a pro opening weekend screenings of Wakanda Forever, uh, they must prove that they are down for the cause, otherwise racist! Uh, yeah, we, we all get the grift or the joke here, really. Uh, something this is not really a joke, this is just pure actual racism against white people. They just, of course, the media doesn't want to say this is racism, they think this is all just. Yeah, um... I don't know about that one. Oh, and about that uh, Pacific called racism or big deal thing that you guys are uh, that I'm going up to about. Um, yeah, we have Canada's National Arts Center hosts blackout film screening for an all black identifying audience. We have this here, Canada's National Arts Center English Theater in Ottawa, Ontario, racist place, announced that it will host blacks only event in what they dubbed have dubbed a blackout night. In a post, the theater writes that it will have assurance of his God is, the Black's only screenings can be attended by those who identify as Black. Oh, okay, so, um, by the way, white people, I know a perfect way where you can, where you can get this. Um, since the trans community is insane, and, uh, you guys have a perfect way and you will watch this movie, just identify as Black. What are they gonna do? Throw you out? They can't throw you out if you identify as Black. So, go ahead, go watch that movie, say, oh, I identify as black, because they said it, uh, and then you can go watch the movie. Yeah, free way to get in. <laughs> the listing states, on February 17th, the evening's performance of Is God is welcome, welcome an all-black identifying audience to experience and enjoy a performance in the Babs Asper Theater. The post continues, a blackout is an open invitation to black audiences to come and experience performances with their community. The... The evenings will provide a dedicated sp uh, space for black theater goers to witness a show that reflects the vivid kaleidoscope that is the black experience. It continues, creating evenings dedicated to black theater goers will allow for conversation and participation to be felt throughout the theater and open the doors for black identifying audiences to experience the energy of the knack with a shared sense of belonging and passion. Claudia and editor John Kay brought the event of the, to the attention of a wider audience in a Twitter thread where he wrote that while this event is only for blacks, he is sure other races will get their turn. A post from Kay states that the eligibility requirements for the event have changed their admission requirements, and those who are merely identified as black cannot attend. Oh. Well. Attendees must be black, full stop. The honors and just post still states that those who are identified as black can attend. Well, I, I think, um... I think, guys, white people are still be allowed. So go hold it, go on and, and go in and identify, is it? And if you don't, just sue the uh, just sue the theater for being racist. Um, because, you know, that's what they are. They're actual racists. Uh, it goes on. Update. They have tightened up the eligibility requirements in case someone buys a lot of black makeup and pulls a Trudeau. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, it's hilarious. Uh, they're just, they're just, they're not even hiding their racism at this point anymore. They're just screaming to the rooftops. I've contacted Canadian NAC just to confirm that their anti-racial mixing policy for this event prohibits mixed-race couples. 
Uh, the event's description would suggest that, in that ingenious peoples would not be able to attend the event. This is despite a clear notice on the, on the NATS website that offers a land acknowledgement, which reads, We would like to recognize the eloquent Anishabeg nation on those who traditional and ceded territory with that National Arts Center is located. We gratefully acknowledge that them as the past, present, and future stewards of this land. Of course, to be fair, guys, I don't know very much about Can Canadian law. Can Canada Canada law, but I don't think it really bloody matters because I don't live in that hellscape and I don't ever plan to. Continue to suffer, Canadians, with your own racism. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't. I don't really know the law, and I don't know if you can sue them for racism if that even even allowed in Canada. But no, sure, it's how I, you can in here in America, the U.S. For now. Um, but yeah, it seems that uh, you guys may want to file a lawsuit j just a bit. Um. And then we also have this here, which has to be archived. Theater uh, sparked outrage with black-only audience policy. Uh, so, uh, as the two major Canadian theaters have sparked outrage by announcing exclusive performance for an all-black identifying audience in Ottawa, the National Arts Theater, one of Canada's biggest taxpayer-funding performing arts organizations, will hold its first ever black blackout night in February 17th at the 897th seat at Babs Asper Theater. Hopefully nobody attends, so that they could go down under and completely... According to the Toronto Theatre, the purpose of the event is to facilitate a separate mind for a personal and intimate discussion on the work made and performed by black artists. It added that it welcomed everyone who identifies as black to attend this performance. However, while white entities could not be banned from attending the show on a blackout night, the theatre made clear they would not be welcome. If someone, if someone identifies as a non-black person and requests to enter the room, a member of our team will represent to speak to that person. We try our best to have this labor land on a non-black staff member, and we will have non-black front-of-house leadership or technical and production team members present in the lobby to help de-escalate each such situations. We will also specify across our ticketing and show pages, social media, and other communications that the Black Out Night performance is dedicated to black audiences. There will be no checkpoints. In Ottawa, the National Arts Center said no one is turned away at the door. There will be no checkpoints for black out night ticket holders and no questions will be asked about the identity, race, or gender of anyone. A non-black member of staff will be on hand to have a chat with anyone who seeks to defy the admissions policy. Blackout night started in 2018 with a performance on Broadway where the event was pitched as enabling black theater growers to enjoy events free from the white gaze. Oh boy, that white gaze, so bad. Yep, just just can't, can't stand it. Hmm. Man, the, the white people that I live with, mm, they're white gays. Terrifying. I, I, I feel like I'm going to be a victimized at any point of my time in my life. The two theaters in Canada are the latest to take up with the idea. Reaction to the Blackout Nights has been hostile. I would not... I would be rightfully so. That would be a good thing. Communist Brian blasted the move in the Toronto Sun. What is bothersome is the apparent segregationist appeal. Hero. Oh yeah, very segregationist. Um, uh, rather than encouraging black theater goers in what is a mostly white but slowly diverse financial capital to, att to attend, the neck breaks the sound like this event is only for black patrons, which they pretty much are. Black Shatter, a Canadian magazine celebrating black culture, disagreed. Any attempt at carving out a dedicated space for rationalized communities is often labeled by some, some as racist and counterproductive to this utopian combined idea of all people getting along, despite the fact many individuals still don't like black people, even among people of color. Uh, racial discrimination has been illegal in Canada for de for decades. The first single legislation was passed in Ontario and it's in Saskatchewan in the 1940s and nationally in 1977 with the Human Rights Act. Oh, so you can, uh, okay, good job, white people. You can go and file uh, your racism lawsuit against them. So please go ahead and do and shut them down permanently because that's what needs to be happening. And this is the whole point of it all, oh, people. This is the whole point. White people are bad. Black people are good. Black people can't be racist. White people are only racist. That's what they want to push onto society. And they want to diversify us more. See, here's the thing. When I start my podcast, and which will be relatively within a month or so, give or take, maybe a eh, month and a half, uh, there will be um, very little of diversifying here. Um, there will be mostly just uh, chatting, talking about certain things that's happening around, maybe around the world, or maybe even talking about things that are happening in our daily lives or whatever. It will be called the Covecast. A little uh, something that you would want to get, where everybody is welcome here. And we'll be just talking, bullshitting, and chatting. Uh, we may have some uh, uh, call-ins or whatever, but we'll, we'll see what goes on. Anywho, enough about that. 
This is all about diversifying, segregating, and removing people from a specific color. Except it's not happening to black people this time, it's happening to white people. See how it's being reversed here? Or now it's just like, you know, it's just, you know, not really a big deal if you're if you're hating on white people, but it is with whites. Yeah. So I think that um that we're all getting a great picture here. One thing we can do is fight back against this, suit the hell out of them when they are doing this. And um, maybe get our culture and our society back into reality. I know it's Canada, and that Canada is a hellhole. But uh, if we don't fight back here, well, guess what? It's going to come to the States. It already is in the States in some regard, but, you know, food for thought. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Like, subscribe, share, and as always, take care.